Perfect. Welcome, everyone, that uh, for our uh, May webinar in Corona times around uh, Google Paper State Commission Model. Um, very happy to have so many people on the call. Uh, we're still uh, obviously waiting for some more people to dial in, but let's get started uh, because uh, time is precious. The hotels are reopening, and hopefully we can finally take care of more guests again rather than rather than joining in some online sessions and going back to reality. Nevertheless. Today, uh, I want to introduce uh, the new Google model to you. We are uh, MyoTeshop. MyoTeshop is a marketing company from Germany. We are based in Leipzig. We also have an office in Barcelona. We have around 60 employees managing the visibility of hotels in the online world, driving direct revenue through the hotel websites. My name is Uli Kastner. I'm the CEO and founder. I founded uh, MyoTeshop uh, a little bit more than eight years ago. I'm a guy with basically a hotel background, so I worked in various hotels um, over the last 20, uh, almost 24 years. And um, yeah, so I worked for also for different platforms like Trivago and TripAdvisor. And uh, before that, I worked for various hotel chains in the e-commerce sector. And um, yeah, and now we are uh, a platform with around 2,500 hotels where we manage the online visibility on platforms like Google, Trivago, and so on. And today we're going to talk uh, about uh, commission, the new commission model on Google for hotels. Um, some of you might have joined a webinar in November 2019 where we already had a slide or slides around um, the commission model on Google, which was slightly different at the time, but I still kept some slides from, from November because many things haven't changed and some basics are still the same. So, so the ones who participated in November might uh, see a few things uh, uh, that I talked about at that time already. Um, when we talk about uh, commission, when we talk about commission, it's um, Usually uh, a model where you said, well, it's something we offer at MyTeshop, it's something we can do, but overall speaking, we are more in favor of the cost per click model, and I can tell you why, and you will clearly see it over the next, over the next hour, uh, but we offer it, but we think uh, uh, it's still not the best model for a hotel, and, um, but it has pros and cons, and like with anything in life, it's very important not to be not to judge about models, but to understand what the benefits are and what the disadvantages are, and then make a reflective decision on what is best for you. And I can tell that much up front. It's not always that one model is good and the other model is bad, but there is a, a good model for each one of you. And not always it's the same for all of you. So that's quite important up front. Also, uh, I'm going to give you a, a quick uh, introduction about Google and the way it's visualized on Google. So there's, there are two products actually in Google, Google AdWords, which is a classic keyword advertising, and there's Google Hotel Ads, which is a price comparison on Google that you can see on various, let's say, Google outlets like Google Maps, Google Search, and so on. Okay, let's uh, quickly give you some visualization on how it looks. So if you go basically and you search for a keyword, let's say Hotel Istanbul, right? So you usually get in the search results on the top, you get always four keyword uh, advertisings. So uh, you will always get, um, Oh, there's still some people logging in. Yeah, so you will always get four ads on Google, which is now called Google Ads, previously known as Google AdWords, uh, around keyword advertising. This is not what it is all about today. Today, it's about hotel ads, which is the green area below. So this is basically the search, the maps, or the Google My Business uh, entries that show up. So um, this is uh, fairly, I mean, not that new anymore. So it's one to two years old since Google introduced that. Um, and it takes up quite a significant space of the search results uh, on generic keywords, but also when you search for a hotel specific keyword. So here, for example, I search for a specific hotel name and there you can see that the Google hotel ads are showing up on the right side in the green box. So you can see that a hotel with the Google My Business entry at the top right, uh, below the Google My Business entry, you have a variety of offers that a hotel has uh, for that date. And as you can see, in that case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 different offers showing up for that hotel for a specific date. And if you zoom in a little bit, you could see that prices also vary quite significantly. So there's a reason for price comparison. Still at the top left, which is uh, the more dominant space and the more the space with the higher click rates is still Google AdWords. 
So again, we talk about the green box. And if you go into more detail, let's say for if you search for Istanbul, here you can go into more detail, you might get the map search, um, then you get uh, usually the map on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you get the hotels. And if you click on one of the hotels, you again stay on Google and you go one step deeper. And here you get again, the Google My Business Entry and then you get um, and then you get uh, below here you get um, the four in that case for uh, price comparison if you show on a few more prices you would again get more offers so in here it's always important as you can see the official hotel website again is there so when we talk about uh, google and when we talk about what we do we always talk about how to add your hotel website into that price comparison and obviously you should do it in a better way than in this example because here you can clearly see the hotel website is seven euros more expensive than expedia it's on rank number three not on rank number one so there are various things you can optimize and they can also visually see um, how important it is not to just show up but to show up with the right price in the right location and that's quite important uh, to understand how Google works because Google, again, is not an OTA. Google is a search engine, more of a search engine than, 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 than anything else. And Google always is trying to provide choice. So you get a choice of reviews, you get a choice of pictures, and you get a choice of prices. And the choice of prices is provided to you in, 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 in a way of ranking. So there's always, in, usually there are always four uh, uh, prices showing up, and then you can click on a few more prices and you get more. And there's quite a significant aspect to the ranking factor where you show up, how you show up, and that your website is actually showing up at the right location at the right time. So for that, we look at the difference. Okay, there's a cost per click model on Google versus commission. So on Google, you have two options. And uh, let me briefly dive into that. You have three options. On the one option is you pay for the click. And um, now we go into, into the detail. What does it mean? So I just try to explain it very simple. And again, if there's anyone from any super online marketing expert or any Google expert on the line, it's quite difficult because obviously there's a very complicated setup in the background at Google and I try to explain it to you. And sometimes for the chance of being transparent and, and make it easy, I might have to simplify certain things. So it might not always be 100% correct, but in overall nutshell, I try to explain it rather simple and maybe not in absolute correctness in the depths of things. But rest assured, we know the depth of things as well. Uh, but today, it's really to explain it to the, the wide masses for everyone to keep it as simple as possible. I try to simplify a little bit. It's like it's like when you hear the doctors and virologists talking about corona, they, it's also quite complex to talk about viruses. But if the general masses need to explain it, they might have to simplify uh, things once in a while. So let's talk about those uh, models that Google has in place. The cost per click model is basically the fact when someone clicks on one of these ads like we've seen before. So your website shows up in your in your price comparison. Someone clicks on your website, arrives on your, is sent to your website, maybe makes a booking immediately or maybe even with uh, some days uh, delay, some day later. So around 20 to 30% of the people click and book, not immediately, but uh, within the next five days. So, um, then they book and they usually don't book for today as well they book for maybe four five six weeks in advance on average so let's say they book six weeks in advance or let's for the for the ease of things let's say four weeks so it's mid-may so end of june people are gonna arrive yeah and then you have to pay for the click today the person lands on your website books arrives in five weeks or in six weeks um, then you get your money so basically from a liquidity standpoint you pay now and you get the income in let's say four weeks right so from a liquidity standpoint cost per click is not the ideal model because yes you would have to pay you would have to pay for um for uh the click now and you make the income on the on the room revenue let's say in four weeks maybe even later um then on the other side there is a commission model and here we need to distinguish between actually between two models yeah? so we're now talking uh we talk about the usual commission model at google which is called cpa cost per acquisition and on that model it's usually working that way that someone clicks on google to your website they book on your website let's say in four weeks so they arrive in june but you have to pay in may 
for the booking generated. So the commission model, the standard commission model on Google, the CPA model is a model where someone clicks, books, and you pay for the booking in the months when the booking takes place for any time in the future. And it also includes cancellations. So you have to pay for also for possible cancellations. So that's a model Google usually has in place when you talk about commission. So there's no reconciliation if the booking really has arrived, if there was a cancellation. And you also, from a liquidity standpoint, usually have to pay within the next, let's say, whenever the booking takes place in that month. So in that case, booking comes mid-May. You have to pay for it end of May. And the money comes into your bank account by um, by uh, uh, by June when the booking arrived. So now Google implemented a new model, the so-called paper stay model. So let's call it PPS. So on the PPS model, the way it is like that someone clicks today, books within the next few days in four weeks, arrives in four weeks, no cancellation, goes into your hotel, pays. By the end of June, you need to make a reconciliation report to Google where you tell Google, yes, this booking actually has arrived. And if this booking has arrived, then by the end of the month, so end of July, you have to pay for that booking. So you pay Google basically four to six weeks after the customer paid to you. So from a liquidity standpoint, this is a very interesting model, right? Because you obviously get the booking, if you have a non-refundable rate, then might, the, 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 the customer public might pay even earlier. And you would, um, and you would uh, have to pay uh, several weeks after the customer departed. So it's very similar to the classical OTA models with booking and Expedia, right? So, on, well, not so much Expedia actually, because that's a merchant model usually, uh, if you're not on Hotel Collect, but let's say on the normal Hotel Collect OTA models where you pay six weeks after departure. So it's very liquidity friendly. So, and that's maybe the biggest benefit that uh, this model currently has. Mm. So you have these three models. In the past, it was actually like that, that Google always had this paper stay model. So it's technically not correct that this is a new model. It's actually something Google had in place all the time. And it was optional for your technical provider to actually provide it to you. So um, not every technical provider had it, but technically it was already in place. And some providers, I, even in Germany, I know one provider who already had it in place and that it could use it. So it's not technically not new, but now Google is trying to roll it out to more providers and give it, because in the past it was limited to really big providers, really big technical providers. Now they're trying to roll it out to more providers so, so all hotels can benefit from it. So much uh, for the model. I hope that is all clear. So next one, and this is now a very important statement because from our perspective, the way we look at this commission is CPC because Google works on a CPC. And this is where now a lot of people get like, hold on, what do you mean? Right? Because we have these three models in place, but still you need to remember that the way Google works is a cost per click model. So the way Google earns money is on a cost per click basis. So if you look back, Basic, okay, there is your hotel. There are four platforms, let's say Booking, Expedia, your hotel website, and maybe another OTA. Every click that is put on one of those links, yeah, if you go back here, and every click that is on one of those four guys is actually providing money to Google on a cost per click basis. Yeah, so, and the ranking, and that's now the quite important part, the ranking rules. So how does it actually work? Who's on number one and who's on number two and who's on position number three? There are very important ranking rules that make sure that you are within that ranking and some position. And those ranking rules depend on several factors and CPC, the cost per click is one of the most important ones. So the more you pay for your click, the higher you rank. The second part is also your price competitiveness. So if your price is, for example, cheaper than the price of someone else, then you usually get a ranking benefit. So you might show up further in the ranking, even though your CPC might be lower than of other people. Yeah. Again, going back to that example, you could see, for example, Expedia is a cheaper has a cheaper rate and shows up. Uh, above the website. And that could be, we don't know that, but it could be that this is even though they, they pay a lower CPC. And the third factor for your ranking is quite important is the rate accuracy. So if your website shows 100 euro and you click on it, and then the price is 120, 
this is not good for Google because Google doesn't like that. So if your rates are not updated on Google on time and you show false rates, this might also lead to a lower ranking in your, for your hotel. So those ranking rules are quite important and those ranking rules are very much based around the CPC level. So those algorithms are coming down to a CPC. So what does it now mean? Because the commission is CPC, what does it mean? Give you a very simple calculation. Again, and for those of you who were in the webinar in, in November, yeah, so we have around, let's say, Google delivers a thousand clicks to you. Yeah? Usually on a thousand clicks, you pay a, you pay a CPC, let's say you pay 70 cents, so you pay 700 euro for those clicks. Done. You've got the clicks, you pay for the clicks, point taken. Yeah, and then you put the 70 cents into the auction model because the CPC, as I said, the ranking depends on an auction. So uh, this is what you set for the auction. You can change that CPC every day, all the time. In this case now, if you're on a commission rate, it works slightly different. You put a commission, let's assume we take a commission of 12%. Take a commission of 12%, you get the 1,000 clicks. So Google goes straight and says, okay, you have a conversion rate of 3%, and your average booking value is 200 euro. So on 1,000 clicks, you deliver, they deliver 30 bookings to you, and those 30 bookings generate a revenue of 6,000. So if you pay a commission of 12%, Google earns 720 euro. Those 720 euro, Google calculates back to the 1,000 clicks. So effectively, Google delivered to you 1,000 clicks for 720 euro, that means that effectively you paid 72 cents per click, right? And this, this calculation Google does on a commission model with every, basically, with every click and every conversion they measure. So they always send you clicks up front for free, but they need to, but it's obviously not for free. They need to know how much was this click worth or how much did I, Google, actually earn with that click. And that way they always need to measure the kind of commission that they get and then need to calculate it back to the time uh, 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 for the auction uh, to give you the correct ranking. So in that case, obviously, the bid, uh, the bid score was 72 cents. That goes back into the ranking, right? So that's the way Google calculates the whole thing. So this is always now, obviously, uh, uh, quite important to understand the model of Google. So the model of Google is CPC. Just Google gives you the option to work on a commission. They basically need to go to you, work on your model with the commission, but they always need to bring it back to their own model in that case, which is CPC. Very, very important dynamic to understand. So if we look at those dynamics, we already see uh, obviously uh, uh, several aspects. And one important aspect is, I mean, why do we actually go live with your website on Google, right? Because you could also say, hey, I'm not gonna do it at all because actually your hotel is already sold on Google. You already sold on Google through Booking, through Expedia, through these guys, but you already pay these guys a commission, right? So every booking that comes in through Booking.com, you pay a commission. So every booking that comes through Google, if you're not live with your website, comes in for a commission. So you already have a commission model on Google. You just not pay to Google directly, you pay to Booking, right? So now Google comes and say, hey, come to me directly. But if you go on Google directly, the goal absolutely should always be that in that case, you really, if you have a thousand clicks, obviously you don't want to get, get these clicks go to OTAs, but you want to have those clicks going to, uh, going to your website. So that's the whole purpose why we do this, right? We want to shift the traffic away from booking onto your website from Google. So you cut out one player in the supply chain and you go directly and get your business directly. So the shift, the, the goal is obviously to shift 100% of the clicks and get 100% market share in your hotel for a cheaper cost. That's the whole purpose, because if you pay 15% of booking and you shift all the bookings over to your website and you start paying only 14%, this is 1% money saved. And this 1% is profit. This is pure profit. So the more you shift for a lower cost, the better it is. So theoretically, you could say, great, if I pay on average 15% commission to booking, I now go to Google and now I'm going to pay 10% commission. Or, hey, you could even say, let's go for five. Okay, let's go five. And then you could say, great, with 5%, every booking I get through Google that is not coming through booking, but comes straight to my website, I pay 5% instead of 15 and I make 10% more profit. And you could say, cool, if there is 100,000 euro and I just shift it over for 10% less, then I make 10% uh, saving on 100,000 euro. 
Sounds very easy and unfortunately it's not because there are several problems connected with it. Let's go into those challenges. Problem number one is uh, let's assume you have 100% visibility and 100% top position. So you're always on top and you're always visible with your, with your hotel website. We have a lot of hotels we manage on cost per click and where we have that situation. They're always on top position and so on. Now, on a CPC level, yeah, this might change. Yeah? One month we might be on 8%, the other month we might be on 10, the other month we might be on 15, then it goes down to seven. It's very, it's very dynamic, right? Because it's an auction model and it changes on seasonal aspect and so on. But I can tell you as much, on all of our hotels that we have live on Google Hotel Ads with, let's say, Average values, the average cost that we calculate is around 10% on Google Hotel Ads. That means that if we spend a thousand euro on cost per click, we get around 10,000 euro return, right? So that's the way it works. So now let's say you go live on Google Commission and the commission is set at 12%. Maybe a, some providers just give you the option of one percentage. They just say, hey, look, pay 12%. Okay, you pay 12%, but hey, on a CPC, you would have made 10. You're already paying 2% too much, yeah? Or if you pay 8% and the commission is at 12, you might pay 4%. So you're giving up, you overpay. So the problem is, and that's what we see specifically with a lot of hotels in the leisure areas, hotels with a low, let's say, with a lower share of booking.com and Expedia, that those hotels are actually overpaying if they go on a commission because they could get the same visibility, the same top position and the same amount of traffic for a lower cost if, they, if, if their website performs well and so on. So that's actually a big risk because why would you actually pay more than you have to? Yeah? Just to put a little bit of effort into cost per click management might save you quite a significant amount of profit. So that's obviously a disadvantage of the commission model potentially, right? Because you might pay too much. Um, but we also have the other situation. The other situation is you might not show up on top position. So you pay a commission and you're simply not showing up. You, know, you might only get 10% of the clicks or 20% of the top position. So what's the problem now? For example, and now I'll give you a very simple uh, example again that I gave you before. You might say, hey, look, I go on 5% while I pay 15% to booking. Well, if you pay 5% to Google, you know, your effective CPC in the auction model might be quite low then the problem is that booking.com gets 15% from you. Booking.com takes a share of those 15% and reinvests it on Google. So they might always set a higher CPC that you actually get. And that's the reason why I have such a low visibility and other OTAs might that as well. So you might get a very low visibility and that means your commission might be too low. So the effective CPC uh, set by the commission bidding is so low that it's low ranking, little clicks and therefore no bookings. And that's actually something we also notice with quite a lot of hotels, specifically hotels that are in a high competitive landscape, uh, working with a lot of OTAs and that are handing out high commissions to OTAs and at the same time try to spend less on Google. And then it's great, right? You could say, cool, it's commission. You don't have a risk, right? You show up on Google and every booking you get is commission and you only pay for what you get. But if you don't get anything, where's the point? If there are 100 fish out there and you only get one fish once in a while, then the volume is so low. And remember, all the other fishes are still coming to you, but they're coming to you through booking and, Ex and Expedia for a much higher cost. So in that case, obviously, you would have to work on your commission and potentially pay more to Google to be more competitive. And I'm coming to that in a minute. Problem number three is also how much do you actually pay for the service, right? Your service provider, my shop or whoever it is, there are costs involved there as well, right? So how much money do you actually pay? Yeah? And, and how much money does your service provider get? And this needs to be transparent. Yeah? So in our case, we work on a variable model and we take, we take basically uh, on the revenue we generate, we take a percentage for ourselves. So if you, get, if you earn little, you pay less. And if you earn more, you pay a little bit more. There are other options where specifically on the commission model, I saw a lot of things and I'm not going to, tell any names, but there are big providers, big uh, uh, reservation systems, American reservation systems, and so on, that are providing you with a model where they say, look, okay, you pay 12%, 15%, 17% commission on Google Hotel Ads. And that's what you pay to them, not to Google. Now the next question is, okay, 
but what is actually my commission on Google effectively because how much goes to the agency and how much goes to Google? That is something that should be transparent, but on many levels it's not. So very often it might be that you pay 15%, but maybe effectively only 8% go to Google. And in that case, your visibility is based on the eight and not on the 15. And that's a problem, right? Because you don't know that and many providers are not really transparent on that. That's something you would have to find out. And the second thing that you need to find out is also if it's a fixed model or a variable model, right? Because um, I mean, are there, for example, platforms where you say, look, we connect you to Google. You can set any commission that you like. You can start with 1%, yeah, but you get, but it costs you a fixed amount of money and it costs you, let's say 150 euro a month which is great, but what happens if you have hardly any traffic, right? I just give you a rough number of all the hotels that we have live. I mean, we have hotels live that make 100,000 euro on Google Hotel Ads a month. But we also have hotels, and that's the average, and the average hotel spends around 150 euros a month and gets around 1,500 to 1,600 euro revenue through Google. That's the average hotel. So if you, the average hotel spends around 150 to 200 euros on clicks and you pay another 150 euro for the software, this is increasing your costs by 100%. So quite expensive, right? So you need to watch your fixed cost and depending on the amount of volume that you have, you obviously need to decide if a fixed cost model is actually valuable for you. And I can tell you that for 80 to 90% of the hotels we work with, it's better for a variable model because still the volumes are fairly low. I mean, if you're small and you have small volumes, then 150 50 euro fixed cost a month can be pretty much a neck breaker. So that's quite important to look at that as well. Problem number four, there's only one way to optimize a campaign. And I give you, and I give you uh, some examples uh, later again, but uh, let's put it that way. Your major lever is your conversion rate, right? Because if you go live on Google or any other online marketing platforms, the better your conversion rate, the better your results. It's quite easy if you convert with, let's say 5%, and if you convert with 10%, if you get a thousand clicks with 5% conversion, right? These are 50 bookings. If you get 10% conversion, you get hundred bookings, same amount of clicks. So your conversion rate is absolutely crucial for the results of your campaigns. If you take risk and if you pay on a CPC model, you get clicks. And if your website doesn't convert, your results are shitty. Let's put it that way, right? If your results are shitty, you're going to stop. What do you do if your results are bad and you wasted money? You think you should, well, you can stop everything and blame your agency. That's one option. Option number two is you think about, hmm, what can I do better? Because if I double my conversion, my results might be much better. But that means you would have to invest, again, time and effort. So you would have to improve your website. You would have to improve your booking engine. You would have to improve your pricing. This is usually stuff when we have hotels with where the results are not so good, we usually give them a set of recommendations and help them to improve their infrastructure. Now, coming to the human character and the human behavior as we know it, if you don't have to take any risk, you don't also improve the stuff you have to improve, right? So if you get traffic from Google, right? And the traffic, you don't have to pay for the traffic because you're in a pay to stay model. Yeah? So you're, blade, you're laying back and you say, oh, cool, Google sends me traffic and I don't have to, I only have to pay if I get something. Okay, then you just sit there and you let it happen. And then all of a sudden, a month later, you look at your results and you're like, hmm, I don't get any bookings. There's no volume, what's going on there? Because it's a vicious circle. You let the traffic run, you don't optimize it, your conversion is low. If your conversion is low, the CPC on Google drops, right? Because Google calculates back your CPC and that way your CPC is low and then the ranking is low and then you don't improve anything, then your volume is low, so you don't get anything from Google. Okay, you could say no risk, I didn't have to, you didn't have to invest anything, but you still invested time and expectation on getting traffic and nothing came. And always remember, the bookings might still come, but they might not come through your website, but they come through booking where you pay a higher commission again. So that's a very vicious circle that we see that people that take no risk have no incentive to improve. And if you have no incentive to improve, you get lazy and you lay back and then there's a vicious circle that there's no real business coming in either. Problem number five, let's assume you go live with a 5% commission 
and you see, hmm, my visibility is pretty low, right? If you work with us, we can, you can go to hundreds and say, okay, let's start with 5%, and then we go in 5%, and then we notice, okay, your top position is 5%, you're hardly showing up, all the fish going to booking, so you're not getting anything. So what would be the, the outcome? At Google with the commission model, you could say, okay, let's increase your commission. You could go in there like a little bit, you can go on booking where you can make additional uh, commission. You can say, okay, 5% to 6%, 6% to 7%, you can change your commission for more visibility. And now here, I wanna switch over to uh, a little calculation to make it a little bit more transparent. Hold on, there you go. And here I made a little, a little calculation that you can see. So let's assume you are in a commission of 12%, yeah, that's a little bit, uh, uh, let's say an assumption. Yeah? Um, below here, you can see the average results we have with our hotels. So our average uh, CPC on Google Hotel Ads for the last three months was around one euro seven. Mm. This was pre-corona times. The average conversion rate on our hotel websites currently on Google Hotel Ads again is 4.5%. And the average booking value, so the amount of booking might be two nights, one hotel, is 246 euro and the average cancellation rate is 5% of that. So if you take that money and if you take 150 clicks, yeah, you get around, around seven bookings, you get a revenue excluding cancellation of 1,577 euro. On the CPC, that means a cost of 161, which is an effective commission 161 divided by the revenue of 10.17%. If you're ending up paying a commission of 12, you might overpay by 1.83. That's just one part of calculation. Now let's make a little let's make a little game. Let's reduce your conversion rate to three percent. Boom! All of a sudden, you see your commission model is much more attractive, right? So you can see that that all of a sudden, with a commission model, you would have paid at twelve percent, but on a CPC, you would have been at fifteen point two six. So you would overpay on a on a CPC model with three percent, and you would lose three percent profit. And that way, obviously, a commission model is much more much more risk friendly. But now you saw another impact and let's go, let's go back to that. Let's go back to 4.5. You could also see that the CPC is changing. So you can see here, our CPC is at 1.7. And on that 1.07, we actually can see that we get 100% visibility. So let's assume your conversion rate is 4.5. You would pay 1.26 on a CPC effectively on a commission model but you already paid 1.7 yeah, to get a more or less 100% visibility. So 1.26 is again, overpay. You would pay more for the CPC without getting more visibility. Now, if you reduce again the conversion rate to 3%, your CPC also drops to 0.84%. And with 0.84%, which is significantly lower than 0.17, you would obviously get less visibility. So you might not even get 150 clicks. You might only ending up getting maybe 80 clicks. Yeah? And that way, all of a sudden, your revenue drops. That's the dynamic. That's the dynamic of, of uh, obviously, with commission, with, uh, with, lower, with, uh, uh, with lower visibility. And now the next point comes. Okay, let's say, fine, uh, my conversion rate is, uh, is, is 12, and now I want to increase my commission. Okay, let's go and increase my commission from 12 to 14. Yeah? Okay, so now the commission rate goes from, well, let's, make, let's make it easier, from we were at 12, at, and it's 84 cents for the CPC down here, and now you go from 12 to 13, right? And you can see that the effective CPC, if everything else stays the same, your effective CPC that Google calculates back is going from 84 cents to 91 cents. So it goes up by 7%. And you can only change your commission 1% at a time. So you can go 1% up and down. You cannot go half a percent or 0.2%. But 1% in that example means 7 cents on a CPC. If you manage a campaign on CPC, you can actually change from 84 cents to 85 cents to 86 cents to 87 cents, you can go cent by cent by cent. So it's much more granular. Because the next question is maybe going up from 0.84 to 0.91 cents is actually too much. Maybe 87 cents would have been enough, right? So the granularity of CPC is also much better because you can actually optimize in, in cent steps, right? 
And that's what I mean. And that simple example here on the slide, yeah, you increase uh, from by 1%, it might equal a CPC increase from 1 euro to 1 euro 10, but maybe 1 euro 3 would have been enough. So you can see that commission is much, much more granular. And at the same level uh, with commission, uh, with CPC, you can also be much more granular on optimizing a campaign within the Google, within the Google tool, because you can set different CPCs for different scenarios. You can say, uh, I pay a different CPC for Tuesday versus Wednesday. I pay a different CPC on mobile versus desktop, Germany versus US, seven nights versus three nights. That can be quite decisive in optimizing a campaign and get better results out of a campaign. Why a commission is always one commission across all these scenarios. So you cannot set different commissions on different devices, for example. That's impossible. So, and let's put it that way to quote Google a little bit here. It's the way Google puts it is they say, yes, CPC gives you much more, much, many more options. Let's put it that way. It's, it's a speedboat. It's something where you can act fast, where you can react to situations, where you can go immediately from one scenario to the other. Why commission is you set one thing and you cannot optimize. So it's more like an oil tanker. It's a very steady risk-free approach. Yeah? It just moves and it delivers, but it takes away flexibility, it takes away granularity. So it's very, it's much, much more difficult to actually optimize a campaign uh, to the best outcome. And always remember, Booking, Expedia, all these guys, they are only sitting in speedboats. So if you decide to sit in an oil tanker, you need to make it with a conscious decision and don't complain afterwards that you don't have the flexibility on a commission model that you have on a CPC. On the other side, obviously sitting on a speedboat, it's much more complicated to steer it, to run it, to maintain it, while an oil tanker just runs every day on a steady boat and takes less time away from you, right? So that's obviously a very important uh, way of looking at things. Now coming to maybe the most abstract thing to understand. Yes, you can change a commission on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, theoretically, you can go in and can change commission today from 1% to 5, tomorrow from 5% to 10. You know? But the big problem, and now coming back to the actual operational standard of how to manage that. The way it works is, yeah, and go back to my, go back to my chart. Yeah? So you set a commission, let's again say, we, we start with a commission of 5%. Yeah? And let's assume we have a conversion rate of 4.5. So if we set a commission of 5%, yeah, and you're a new hotel to Google, Google doesn't know you. So Google needs to make a decision on day one, okay, there's a new hotel with a website, Where do, how do we rank it? So Google might do a very similar thing that we do right now, right? They might say, okay, we get 5%. We know from other hotels, the average booking value is 250 euro, the average conversion rate is 4.5. Okay, the average cancellation rate is 5%. So they make several assumptions based on the data that they have available. And that way they say, okay, your CPC is set at 53 cents. Then Google might say, okay, mm, let's take, and, and this is something I don't know. Yeah, this is just the way I would do it. Let's put it that way. But I assume if Google would rather put a little bit lower CPC than a too high CPC, right? Because they might say, okay, let's take a risk aspect and let's reduce the CPC from 53 and maybe put 40 cents instead. So they might put you on a lower CPC because they might not want to give away clicks for free because it might be that Booking and Expedia pay more. And if they put the effective CPC at the beginning on a too high level, and then afterwards it turns out all of a sudden, oh, the conversion rate is actually, the conversion rate is actually 3%. And the average booking value is only 200. Yeah? Then all of a sudden, the effective CPC they should have given you is 29 cents, right? So they might say they might always say, okay, let's go with the with the lowest possible result to expect. So they rather put you on 29 than on than on 53, like like before, right? So that is something I would expect uh, to start with uh, uh, um, first, and. Um, Hold on. So, um, so, but that results automatically in the situation that you might end up in a lower ranking, right? So you might start with a very low ranking. Now then, if you start your commission, if you try to increase your commission, the problem is that 
this, this CPC is set for you for one month. This Google sets this CPC, maybe like I said, 29 cents, they set it for you one month. Then at the end of the month, they do the reconciliation, right? We basically, the way it works is we send you an Excel file or we might do it through an online tool. You log in or you put the Excel file, you put it against the reservations you got and you give us a feedback, okay, this was canceled, this was realized, send it back to us. Then we take the revenue we earn uh, uh, or, the, or the commission we, we, we charge or Google can charge, send it back to Google and then Google says, okay, cool. Uh, actually the conversion rate was at 5% and the average booking value was at 300. Okay, cool. Now we know we can set your CPC at 71 cents. So Google takes your CPC and sets it at 71 cents before you were at 29. So those 71 cents then increase your visibility, obviously. But it starts increasing visibility once Google had made the reconciliation, which is potentially by the end of the month. So, and now again, coming to the dynamic of an auction model. If we do CPC, that auction is in real time. So booking changes CPCs, or also when we work with our hotels on a CPC, we change CPCs on a real time today to influence the visibility for tomorrow. So the auction model takes on a 24 hour scheme actually. So you change a CPC, it's effective usually within a day, right? And then booking changes it, it's like an, it's like an auction. Yeah? And let's, let's say if you go on an auction uh, and, you, and you auction for, for a picture, it's like, okay, someone puts down a price, you put down a better price. And this kind of auction, it would be that someone makes an auction and you are putting up a bid six weeks later. So basically Google puts down your bid on 71 cents six weeks afterwards. But this time, but at that time, the 71 cent might already be out of date again because Booking and Expedia in real time already have changed the bits again. So whatever bit you get is never affecting your immediate situation, but it's always coming in four to six weeks late. And that way your, your bid auction is never correct. And that is a huge problem because you never actually are an active member of the auction. You're always passive and you're always weeks on delay. And with all the seasonality and everything we have in our hotel industry, this can come to a very high price. Huh? So this might be that you're never in the right. So you might either always overpay or you underpay one, one way or the other. And if you overpay, you pay more than you have to. And if you underpay, you don't get the visibility you need to. So, and the chance that your bid on a commission actually really hits the button in that moment, the likelihood and the chance is extremely low. I always compare it to if you get a baby and the doctor gives you a birth date. Only 4% of the babies in this world are actually born on that birth date. 96% are born two weeks before or two weeks after the, the birth date. And it's the same thing here. The chance that your bid out of a commission is actually in the right time at the right spot, I would say is even below 4%. It's maybe even less than 1%. So the chance that you over or underpay is extremely high and that can cost you money. Yeah, so it either costs you visibility or it costs you profit. And if it costs you visibility, it also costs you profit because remember the booking will come in, but they will come in through booking and Expedia. And if you understand that dynamic, you see the difference between commission and CPC. So coming back uh, to that, give you a little overview basically of now what are the pros and cons or let's say the pros of both models. Yeah? The point is here that obviously, like I said, on the CPC, you have a very flexible performance and so on. You can granularly optimize, you can do all the things, you have transparency, you can make fast changes. Yeah. So overall speaking, it's very good for hotels specifically with high volume. Yeah? With, when you have certain volumes, when you have like, let's say more than a hundred clicks a month, yeah, then it starts because then uh, um, because the way we optimize campaigns and the same thing with booking and Expedia, the way they do it, they don't do it manually, right? We don't have people observing manually all that. There are machines, there are computers, algorithms, calculating and bidding, right? And making the best bidding decision in real time, right? So that way, obviously you need some volume. If you only get 20 clicks a month, an algorithm always has problems because you're not getting enough clicks. So the more clicks you have, the better it is. The more hotels that participate, the better it is, right? The more hotels we have, the better we can make assumptions from one hotel to the other. So that's quite important. Yeah? But, and we can also optimize the hotel individually. The 
PPS model, now let's put it quite simple, the major benefit is that it's liquidity friendly. And that's obviously a model that is currently in Corona times quite significant, right? Because you might not have the money to pay upfront for your bookings, right? While at the PPS model, you only have to pay once the booking has arrived. And that's in my eyes, the core advantage of the PPS model is that it's liquidity friendly, right? While at, at CPC, you have to pay six weeks before arrival and with PPS, you have to pay six weeks after departure. Right, so that, that is the key difference, and this is 12 weeks liquidity difference. Now the big question is, and in my eyes, because you end up overpaying, and, and what we can see is when you work on a when you work on a on a PPS model, I would expect hotels to pay between two to five percent more for a booking than on a CPC. That's a statement I can make based on our own experience with our own data. So now the big question is, are you willing to give up? two to 5% profit for a 12 week liquidity advantage. And that's a financial decision, right? But this is very often something I see with hotels that where hotels don't make the calculation for themselves. I completely agree. It might be beneficial for you because if you have no money on the bank account, you might have to take the hit, the hit on the losses, right? Just because you cannot afford it and you need the business to come in. So that's something where you might say, okay, Let's, let's move to a PPS model, right? Because we need it out of a liquidity standpoint. Still, at some point, you might have to turn it back because once liquidity starts running and you might have to, uh, you might picking up on business again, you might want to switch back to CPC because it, it's, it's, it's helping you on the, you have liquidity build up. And once you have the liquidity build up, it's usually always better to go for profitability. So it's always the thing in good times, in good times, the CPC model is great because it helps you improving your profitability and two and a half thousand hotels with us understood that and did it. Yeah. But now in bad times, yeah, we might fall back uh, to other models. Now we nevertheless have to understand. Yeah. Um, it's a risk, right? Because if you go for that liquidity model, you jump on a new model and then, you know, you give up on profits. It's just a decision you need to make. Yeah. And of course, yeah, a commission model always gives you the freedom because it says you only have to pay for what you get. You don't have to pay for something that like if you're on a CPC, you never know if people really book. Yeah? But on the other side, as I mentioned before, you might go live on a commission. If there are no bookings coming in, then your effective CPC on Google is very low, and then your ranking is really low. Again, then you get no clicks. Okay, you have no risk, but you also get no volume. And then again, the volume comes in through booking in Expedia. So if you understood that dynamic, I think you can make a reasonable decision. I think PPS is, very, is a pretty good model for hotels with very low visibility. As I mentioned before, if you get very little clicks and very little volume on Google anyway, because you're somewhere in a B or C destination or you're somewhere in a rural destination, this could happen, then it might be better to move over to a PPS. In a nutshell, we can always say, speak to us, because we potentially can help you to find the right model for you. Yeah. As I said, it's not overall spoken that one model is good and one model is bad. Google says the same thing. They say, look, we give options. And the better you understand the options, the better it is for you. And our job is to help you finding the right model for you. The solution, and that's something we actually how we work for the last years already. We prefer CPC simply because of the uh, uh, fact that Google is a CPC platform. So it's better to work with Google on the model they have. And because also Booking and Expedia does it, you need to measure and track. And now actually comes the beauty of the beauty of the situation. The way we do it on a CPC model is that hotels can give us a maximum effective commission that they want to pay. For example, hotel says, look, I'm willing to pay up to 15%. And then we optimize a campaign on CPC and we spend money as long as the costs are below 15%. If the costs go above 15%, we stop a campaign. So you stop paying. But if you stay below 15%, you only pay for what you really have received. So if your effective commission is only at 10%, you don't have to pay the 15, you only pay the 10. Right? So you pay effectively on the CPC, but you never overpay more than the maximum commission that you're willing to pay. So you control your budget, um, and that's a quite important factor. The only disadvantage, absolutely, is you have to pay for the CPC for the liquidity upfront, 
and not once the uh, customer, not once a customer arrived. The key difference is simply because Google wants to have liquidity, right? And we have to take the money from you, so we have to give it. We have to pay Google immediately as well. So really, it's all about liquidity. Yeah, but on the but at the same time, as I said, from a profitability standpoint, CPC will always always be better than commission in let's say 80 to 90 percent of the hotel cases. No, yeah? so um, if you understood this factor. I think you're ready to make a decision for yourself. One thing, nevertheless, and I had that in November in my last webinar around that topic as well, always remember, in the end, commission is for the lazy. Now, if you're risk averse, commission is great, right? Because you don't pay upfront, you only pay for what you get. But it's not like a typical OTA model on Google because of that auction and because other people steal away the fishes in front of you and then you have to pay higher, more money as well. So again, commission is something that is slow, that is not granular. So in the end, it's for the lazy, it's for the people who don't want to do it any other way. And maybe also for people who don't understand how Google works. And I always say there is, there is a situation we had before. And for those of you who have been around in 2008 in the, in the financial crisis, we had the same problem. The hotels were empty and we needed money and we needed bookings. And there was a platform called booking.com and they came to us and they say, hey, you only pay for what you get. And everyone ran after booking, 8% commission, great. Everyone ran after them. And then four or five years later, everyone was complaining because commission went up from eight to 15%, right? And everyone was stuck with booking.com. I'm not saying that this obviously uh, is, a, is a similar situation, but I see similarities and we should learn from history. So just make wise decision on the situation that you have, make a wise decision on how you deal uh, with those models available, right? It's not, again, it's not about saying that one model is good or one model is bad, but we need to understand that which model fits. And there is, let's say, little benefit other than liquidity on a commission model. And, um, and that's why for most of our hotels, I would not recommend it, even though there are hotels where I would recommend it, absolutely. And uh, at the same time, I would also not say that Google is planning the same thing that, that, than booking.com. But of course, it's about market share for them. It's about, it's about growing in the hotel industry. And Google also has a model called Book on Google, where you can actually make a booking on Google in the Google environment. So it is almost like an OTA model. And so you're not booking through your website, you're booking through a Google environment. And what happens if Google comes around in one year and says, look, we don't send traffic to your website anymore on commission. You have to move over to book on Google on commission. And then all of a sudden you're sucked into the commission model and then you're moving over into the book on Google world. And then Google becomes the biggest OTA and biggest monopoly ever. So I'm not saying, I mean, Google has the goal of don't be evil, right? But at the same time, it's a possibility, right? And as with all everything, we just need to be aware. Just be aware, understand the models. What I like about Google, and that's really great, and that's a huge difference to booking.com is that they give you options. So far, at least. So far, they give you a lot of options. They don't tell you you have to do it that way, you have to do it that way. They give you different options, and you need to play with those options. And that's the beauty of the system, because as long as you can play, it's about the smartest wins. And at booking.com, you cannot play at all, right? Booking just makes the rules and it's always them who are winning. Yeah? That's what I mean as a summary. It's always important, yeah? You need to be visible. If you do Google, if you do Google hotel ads, yeah, it's about visibility. It's great if you can put down a commission of 1%, you don't get any visibility, it doesn't make sense, right? And visibility costs money. To understand that, you need to be smart because the Google model is not easy. And there are a lot of tiny bits and pieces I didn't even mention today, which make things potentially very complicated. That means you can't be lazy. You need to work on your conversion. You need to work on your pricing. Therefore, you work on your profitability. It's all about profitability. I know currently it's a lot about liquidity, but it's still in the end of the day about profitability as well. And it's about independence, right? If you're smart, if you're active, if you work on your stuff, it keeps you independent, right? It's great to have Google. Google gives you is a great opportunity to drive traffic and business through your website, right? But at the same time, there are also other platforms, right? There are more platforms where you can drive traffic. You need a good distribution mix. It's never good to only go with one. 
Well, it's important to have different channels where you drive traffic to your website, different OTAs where you drive bookings into your hotel. Just don't go with one only, right? So that's quite important. And to keep independent, to stay independent, you need to be on top of things. And the reason for today's webinar was to show you the dynamics, to make this model a little bit more, let's say, transparent. Yeah? It's not as easy because in the hotel industry, it's sometimes like, yeah, you get like five, six LinkedIn posts, right? And then everyone is like, oh, cool, Google makes commission. That's the best thing in the world. And people always hype things and, and, and sometimes things get a lot of attention. And our goal is it more like, hey, stay calm, look at it, analyze it, what's the pros, what the cons, and take the pros and cons and make a reasonable decision for yourself. Right, and don't just run after something only because you read about it high level. Right, so we go beyond the headline and dig a little bit deeper. That's really important, and and I hope this webinar helped you a little bit to understand what this is all about. Obviously, if you feel like if you're not working with us yet, feel free to contact us. If you're a new client, just contact us on the business at myateshop.com. You can send us an email and, and get in contact with us and we are happy to go back to you and help you finding the right model. If you're an existing client and you have questions around your running campaigns, you can write us to campaign at myateshop.com and, um, and ask your account manager. As I said, we, uh, it's no problem. You can change from CPC to, uh, to commission model. Remember, commission paper stay is only available on Google Hotel Ads not on Google AdWords. So if you do keyword advertising, these kind of things, it's still not, not available. Um, so it's only available for one activity, only for the price comparison on Google. Uh, but feel free to write us and our account managers are obviously happy to help you. Um, other than that, feel free. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, drop the questions via the chat. Feel free to do so. Uh, but so far, I haven't seen anything coming in. Yes. Um, Obviously, we are always available. Write us, and um, I'm stopping the taping of 